The Lord be with you. And good morning. Welcome to our online service. Happy Father's Day to all you dads out there. And uh, yes, we're in the season after Pentecost now. Boy, we're in a summer of romance, as I like to say here, as we get to go through the entire book of Romans uh, with St. Paul. Uh, but may this be a blessing to you uh, today, the word of the Lord. And may he uh, who has a word so different from every other word, one that's efficient and powerful and caring and life-giving, bring that all to you this day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's pray. Almighty, eternal God, in the word of your apostles and prophets, you have proclaimed to us your saving will. Grant us faith to believe your promises, that we may receive eternal salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for this, the second Sunday after Pentecost, is from the book of Exodus, chapter 19. They set out from Rephidim and came into the wilderness of Sinai and they encamped in the wilderness. There Israel encamped before the mountain, while Moses went up to God. The Lord called to him out of the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob, and tell the people of Israel, You yourselves have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I bore you on eagles' wings, and brought you to myself. Now therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession among all peoples, for all the earth is mine. And you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the people of Israel. So Moses came and called the elders of the people and set before them all these words that the Lord had commanded him. All the people answered together and said, All that the Lord has spoken, we will do. And Moses reported the words of the people to the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from the book of Romans, the fifth chapter, and it is, it's going to be the basis of the sermon this morning. St. Paul writes, For while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person one would dare even to die. But God shows his love for us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since therefore we have now been justified by his blood, much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more, now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. More than that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man, and death through sin, and so death spread to all men because all sinned, for indeed sin was in the world before the law was given, but sin is not counted where there is no law. Yet death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those whose sinning was not like the transgression of Adam, who was a type of the one who was to come. But the free gift is not like the trespass. For if many died through one man's trespass, much more have the grace of God and the free gift by the grace of that one man, Christ Jesus, abounded for many. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the Holy Gospel, according to St. Matthew, the ninth and 10th chapters. And Jesus went throughout all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and every affliction. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like a sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest 
to send out laborers into his harvest. And he called them his twelve disciples, and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out, and to heal every disease and affliction. The names of the twelve apostles are these, first Simon, who was called Peter, and Andrew his brother, James the son of Zebedee, and John his brother, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the tax collector, James the son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon the zealot, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out, instructing them, Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, and proclaim as you go, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse lepers, cast out demons. You received without paying, give without pay. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace are yours. From God, our Father, and from his Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. A very happy Father's Day to all you dads out there, and yes, also to your dad, wherever he may be. God bless him. God's given us the perfect text here for Father's Day as one of our spiritual fathers, St. Paul, holds forth the power of the gospel in the fifth chapter of Romans. I say it's the perfect text because it begins this description of a wrestling match with dad. Did you ever do that? Did you ever wrestle with your dad? Wrestling with dad is one of the true joys of life. You can go at it with him in a way that you really can't do with anyone else especially when you're young. Why? Because you fully trust him. He's not going to hurt you. He's not going to cheat you. And despite the fact that he is way stronger than you, he lets that wrestling go on as long as he can. He teaches you with it. He enjoys you there in it. There with dad, you learn that you can face hardship stress, pressure. You can even lose over and over and over again, but still have peace and total safety because he's your dad and he loves you and he's got your back even in the struggle. That's what we're contending with here today in Romans 5. The struggle. This wrestling match. Where's the power of the gospel? Crucifixion seems weak. Christians still suffer and are mistreated. And hearers continuously struggle with sin in their daily lives. Where's the power of the gospel? Apostle well, Paul surprises us with two main points this morning. Number one, expect to wrestle. And number two, know your opponent's. For one is evil and one is good. Yes, I said he surprises us. Because contrary to what you might think at first, it is God who creates the struggle. He's like dad who finds you lazy and loafing on the couch and grabs you for a good grapple. Expect to wrestle. 
You remember Jacob wrestling with God, right? Paul reveals that struggle runs deeper than that. It goes all the way back to Adam. The old Adam in each of us, the old you, clashes with the life of faith in Christ. Old Adam and Christ are wrestling there and the believer. The life of the new age in Christ has begun in force, but it comes up against the old. Expect to wrestle. That's why Paul says salvation is not yet experienced. It's believed. Though its full power is yours now, it is by faith in God's promise and not one's lived experience. For without faith, all there is, is Adam's life under the law. It's like wrestling dad. The experience is often hard, long, and it feels like you're losing all the time. But you trust dad and know his full power is for you. You're not supposed to interpret his wrestling as evil opposition. You know it's good. He's your dad. I remember as a young boy feeling absolutely invincible because all I ever did, had to do was get my dad. I'm going to get my dad. There was no fear at all. Dear ones, this is all the more the case with our Heavenly Father. Trust him in the midst of every struggle. The life of a believer is one of passing through the afflictions of this age. It is a life lived between Christ reconciling the world on the cross and the day of wrath. Between when the believer received justification and faith and when the rescue of the last day finally comes. The Christian has peace even as afflictions continue. And the struggle only ends when that which is hoped for is given. Which means that the Christian struggle is that gnawing question. What is better, Christian hope or the glory of this world? Will I continue to hold up my hands as a helpless beggar or will I go get to snatching some glory for myself right now? You see, the old Adam wants you to be ashamed of your afflictions. He wants you to see them as weakness, as some sort of proof that God isn't with you. He wants you to take pride in worldly notions of strength, to tell yourselves things would be better if you just had that or this. And he doesn't want to wait. But this is the opposite of the meekness that we talked about last week. It is the opposite of faith. This is not the receiving beggar. This is the self-serving, self-snatching old Adam trying to out-wrestle Christ as though that were possible. Old Adam is not the one who will last. For the glory of this world is passing away. The time is short. The wrath is coming. Don't be surprised. Expect to wrestle. That's Paul's first point. Expect to wrestle. But he's going to surprise us with his second point, too. Know your opponents, for one is evil and one is good. What? I have two opponents? Oh, yes. You've probably noticed. Sometimes you're wrestling God, and sometimes you're wrestling sin, the old Adam. The key is to know your opponents, for one is evil and one is good. Well, we've already seen how God is our good opponent, how he teaches us as our father. And we'll hear more of that in a second. But first, we need to come clean about our other opponent. Sin is a cheater. You can't expect a fair fight with the old you. It's nothing like wrestling dad. Sin fights dirty. It bites, throws dirt in your eyes, tries to hit you where it's dishonorable to hit you. Sin doesn't care about you. It threatens, purposefully lies to keep its power. 
And this is something we need to contend with this morning. Paul says, sin came into the world through one man. He's not talking about some inactive, motionless misdeed that you've done. He's talking about the power of sin. Sin isn't a mere mark against you. It is an evil, death-dealing power that is actively working to hold more influence over your life. Sin hides itself from you. It doesn't want you to realize it is so powerful over you. It works hard to seem small, to minimize itself in your eyes. I mean, the best example of this is when you compare how readily and easily and fully you see sin in your neighbor, while at the very same time, struggle to see sin in yourself. When it's my neighbor's sin against me, while the heavens are shaking. When it's my sin against my neighbor, well, it was only a single blade of grass that was put out of joint. When it's my neighbor's sin against me, I can see all the many people negatively impacted by it. When it's my sin against my neighbor, well, this is just between me and them. Sin is so powerful, powerful over us, that most of the time we don't even see its power if not for the word of God. This is how incredibly loving the gospel really is. For while we were still powerless, at the appointed time, Christ died for the ungodly, Paul says. God held the demonstration, the crucifixion of his son. And what did it demonstrate? His love for those held under the power of sin. And dear ones, him continuing to proclaim it to you, him purposefully having it broadcast in preaching this very day, is how the demonstration continues. His love is active now, in this very word that you're hearing. You are powerless against sin. This was not a fight you could win. So God sent in his champion, a champion for sinners, to break the power of sin and free us from its bondage and slavery. You know now, Paul says, now you know. God loves you. It is undeniable. You are reconciled to God through the blood of Christ. The blood of declares you righteous, Paul proclaims. What declares you right with God? Is it your works, your heart, your faith? No. It is the blood. God's blood. The life of God has spoken for you. You see, your old plan was to hide behind excuses, fig leaves and bushes, as though God's wrath would be abated by these things. But in his great mercy, he chose to hide you behind something far more powerful. The shed blood of Christ, who willingly took the wrath for you and shelters you there with his life. The only way to fight sin and its power is to let Christ fight it for you. That beggar way that says, help Lord, at the very first sign of trouble. Just tell that temptation to sin. I'm going to get my dad. And there's nothing to fear. Know your opponents. For one is evil and one is good. So how about our good opponent? It was C.S. Lewis who said, The Holy Spirit drags us into the kingdom of God, kicking and screaming. Reminds me of when my dad used to have to carry me to my room for a timeout. And we had a narrow hallway. And so because my room was at the end of the hall, he had me in a fireman's carry slung over his shoulder. And I would reach out with my hands and grab every doorway available as he dragged me down the hall to my room. You know, we would wrestle a little at each doorway, but he would always get me to my room. And I always knew he would. I think by the last doorway, we might even be laughing a little bit, for we both knew it was a bit of a game. 
Well, last week, God got us to laugh at ourselves when we thought of a hundred-year-old Abraham and his 90-year-old wife having a baby. He got us to laugh at our impotence and acknowledge how silly it is for us to think we can do it on our own. Well, this week, God gets us to laugh at our wrestling with him and how silly it is to fight him when he is always and only acting for our good. Because the place he's dragging us is not our room for a timeout. It is eternal kingdom of love, peace, and unity. For that endless, unconditional love of his is shared and enjoyed by everyone in the kingdom. Dad knows best. And he's willing to suffer for it. Patient enough to look to the horizon, to play the long game, to win us eternal good despite ourselves. And this is why we trust him. God has given you an earthly father. He's given you your earthly father to be a picture of this way to teach you discipline you, wrestle you gently for your good and growth. No, he isn't always easy on you because that's what you need. He's only trying to be a father like his father before him all the way up to the father of all, our perfect heavenly father who has us all in the hands of his own in Christ. Well, Paul has shown us we should expect to wrestle, for the struggle comes from the gospel, and that we need to know our opponents, for one is evil and one is good. Our strength is not in ourselves. It is in the love of God, in which we have peace and can proudly say, we have the best Father. He saves us with his own life, and though we experience hardship, he shelters us with his love. And we know the outcome in the end because of the Father we have. Thanks be to God for our earthly fathers and eternal praise to our Heavenly Father. In the name of Jesus, amen. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus until life everlasting. In our prayers, we're going to include those we've been naming uh, in recent weeks. Uh, we're, we're also going to be asking the Lord, uh, as he said there, to send out laborers, pray earnestly for laborers. Lord, hear our prayer for a preacher. We're going to pray. This is the first time we've had that text together since I have been the vacancy pastor with you. And so we're going to take our Lord at his word. We're going to trust him and pray earnestly to send us a pastor. Also, um, let you know that uh, Valerie Olson lost her sister, Agnes, recently. And so we'll, we'll pray for, for Valerie and all the family in their grief. We'll thank the Lord for Agnes as well and all the good that she was given to, to give and receive in this earthly life, and the faith in particular by which we'll see her in all eternity uh, with all this, those who have gone before us in the faith. Let us pray. For the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus, and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, you treasure your people for Christ's sake and give us your commandments to guide our ways. Grant that we, redeemed by his blood, may do all that he has spoken. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, send forth laborers to make known the gospel of your kingdom in Christ Jesus. Prosper the labor of pastors, missionaries, and all church workers, that many peoples may hear, believe, and praise you, and hear our earnest prayer, for the sake of Lutheran Church of the Redeemer, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
a righteous father from whom all fatherhood in heaven and on earth is named. Give your grace to the fathers and sons of your church. Inspire them to, by your own example and the example of your beloved son to be perfectly united in faith, hope, and love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, turn the eyes of all who make, ex execute, and judge our laws to you, that they may receive wisdom and strength to faithfully carry out their duties. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God, our God, the earth still yields its increase under your care and preservation. Bless us with daily bread and give us wisdom as stewards of your creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, your Son demonstrated his power over sin by healing every disease and affliction. Grant healing to those in any need, whether grief or need of the body, especially Valerie and her family, Eileen, Fran, Kathy, Lois, Edgar and Krista, Cheryl, Gianni, Elwood and Kathy, and those we name now, in our hearts. Deliver them according to your gracious will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of hosts, you descended on Mount Sinai and bid Moses to come into your presence. Prepare the hearts of all who come to your altar today that they may receive Christ's body and blood for their forgiveness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O blessed Lord, through Moses you called a people to yourself, and from them you delivered up your own Son to be our Savior. By his sufferings and death he has redeemed us sinners from our sins. By his resurrection he has released us from the fear of death. Help us to live as your people, doing the good works for which we were created, and praying with confidence the petitions and supplications of our hearts, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. So, quick announcement for us here. On the 26th of June, it's a Monday evening, 7 o'clock, we're going to be having a meeting with the regional pastor, Pastor David Haverstock. So please, uh, Mark that day in your calendar. If you're able to attend, come on out um, or get in touch with the members of the congregation by the phone, by email, however, um, and get involved in the details of, of that meeting and chatting with each other to make your voice heard. We want um, as many people as possible to be participating at, at that meeting. Also, are you interested in perhaps receiving a ride from someone to take you to church. So you don't have to keep looking at my face here on the video on Sunday. Yeah, well, there are, there's a kind of transportation angel system getting set up. Um, if you are interested to get a ride or you have a ride and can give it to somebody else in the congregation, please contact Dave Domke um, and he's the elder, the elder Dave Domke. And you will, uh, he'll, he'll, he's coordinating that effort to try and make sure that as many people who would like it can get there. And as many people as who need it can find what they need and get there. Uh, so one of the ways God uses his whole body, the whole family, the whole church, uh, 
one for the other to, to fulfill all, all righteousness. Uh, so don't be shy. Uh, somebody needs to, to serve you or you need to serve someone. You never know which one it is, but uh, God grant you the courage to speak up. Uh, so we'll talk to you next week. And otherwise, God grant you peace uh, this week and a very happy Father's Day.